Playtime is now over, and a far more profound two-minute period of your life has just begun. The U.S. Energy Secretary says his government and American companies are ready to help Japan with the removal of radioactive tritium from cooling water. Ernest Moniz spoke to NHK one day after visiting the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear facility. This was my first trip to Fukushima, and it left certainly quite an impression. Uh, one of the impressions was that two and a half years after uh, the tragedy that one still sees the uh, very very clearly uh, mm -hmm. the power of the tsunami and all the, all the damage uh, that it did. Modi said he realizes it's a big challenge to process contaminated water stored at the plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company has been able to remove most of the radioactive materials. The one exception is hard to filter tritium which emits beta rays with comparatively weaker energy. Tritium, uh, for example, is a, is a more difficult uh, challenge, and that's a place where uh, we at the Department of Energy, but also our, our industry, uh, has uh, experience. Japan's industry ministry is considering disposal solutions submitted by domestic and international companies. Modi said his department and U.S. firms are ready to help the Japanese government get concrete results. Thank you very much, everybody. A team from the International Atomic Energy Agency will soon visit the damaged nuclear power plant in northeastern Japan. The experts will investigate the leaking of contaminated water from storage tanks and moves to decommission the plant. IAEA Director General Yukia Amano told reporters in Washington that the team will be dispatched at the end of November. We are planning to send our um, uh, peer review missions uh, in autumn. That is uh, the IAEA mission on decommissioning, and um, uh, it covers uh, the uh, contaminated water issues. Amano says Japan needs to cooperate with international organizations in addressing the nuclear crisis in order to regain the trust of the global community. He said the team will include seawater analysts. Amano says he believes that the visit may ease concerns of Japan's neighbors in other countries about the dangers of the radioactive water leaks. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. Here's the finance minister, Taro Aso. Remember everybody's an Aso? Who can forget Taro Aso? <laughs> The biggest asshole in Japan. Who can forget him? He's the finance minister, right? Yes. What an asshole that asshole is. <laughs> well, he's in this headline. Let elderly people, quote, hurry up and die, says Japanese minister. Taro Aso says he would refuse end-of-life care and would feel bad knowing treatment was paid for the, by the government. So the Japanese government has indicated its willingness to consider providing funds for cleaning up the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. This came in response to a call by the ruling Liberal Democratic Party for a greater government role in the efforts. LDP officials have made the proposal as Tokyo Electric Power Company struggles to contain tainted water leaks at its crippled plant. Scrapping the damaged reactors is also a tough challenge requiring huge costs and time. At present, the utility is required to pay the decontamination costs the government has covered, but the ruling party proposed that the state should consider financing additional decontamination efforts as a public works project. Finance Minister Taro Aso said the cabinet will discuss the proposal. I respect the proposal by the LDP panel, and the government will carefully study it. Aso said the government will also study the possible use of public funds for construction and management of storage facilities for the contaminated soil. That don't make no sense. I focus in on what they've done and what's there and what's coming. We've got 41 miles of open pit of yellow cake, a Dixie cup of this stuff will kill everybody in the restaurant inside of an hour. The mount that's on the leg of a fruit fly has evacuated him for 20 acres of it. Think about that one. A fruit fly had flown into the cafeteria and all the detectors went off and they found a fruit fly and it turned out it was his leg. 
So it shows you how dangerous this radiation is on top of that, and they, you know, they had to go around and decontaminate everything it landed on, or take it away, is what I mean by decontamination. Like, uh, most of uh, Fukushima should be dug up, all the buildings should be torn down. Extraordinary, you think that taking asbestos down is dangerous, we take you get a load of this stuff. Uh, the protocol is, uh, the international protocol for this kind of um, environmental catastrophe is you have to take down all the structures, which is all the buildings, all the apartments, all the all the topsoil, all the trees, everything has to go onto a nuclear waste site and be sarcophagated, making up words for us, um, till the end of time. Not burnt, not liberating those isotopes back into the environment, which is the epitome of stupid. The studies have shown that this, this um, doesn't sink. So yeah, I mean, there's 1,300 isotopes. You can pick and choose what you want. Okay, but the really deadly ones, they don't sink. The ones we're scared, <laughs> the ones we're frightened of, they don't sink. They, in fact, the peer-reviewed academic journals that are well known out there in the community and that are showing that this gathers up at the surface. And because a lot of the tuna and everything also surface feeders and the whales and all this, they're, they're, and the dolphins, they're the ones that are showing, you'll start seeing that show up because the, the plankton depends upon the sunlight at the surface. And like I can explain that in another way, you know, the starfish, the reason, um, the reason the starfish are, we're seeing that effect is because this stuff gets washed back into the ocean, right? It drifts over, lands on the shorelines and everything else. The ocean is full of it. But what I'm saying is it kind of gets recycled at the shoreline over and over and over and over. And these particles get, you know, spread that way more and more and more. It's one thing as it comes over the plume, it's another thing when it slams into the coastline and becomes aerosoled, and then the rain keeps washing this stuff back, and right? So it's never any cascade on the coastline itself. That's why it's so important. Came out. 
Japan's crown prince and princess traveled to the disaster-hit region of Iwate Prefecture and offered encouragement to local residents. Their two-day tour came on the back of visits to disaster-stricken areas in August and September. Crown Prince Naruhito and Crown Princess Masako visited the coastal city of Kamaishi on Saturday. The area was devastated by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. It is home to the largest temporary housing complex in the city, where more than 450 evacuees still reside. The Crown Prince asked an 86-year-old woman whether she interacts with other residents and about her health as the weather gets colder. The Crown Princess engaged in conversation with an 81-year-old woman praising the colorful autumn leaves in the surrounding hills. She asked the woman to take care of herself. I feel I have to be cheerful when I think Crown Prince and Crown Princess care about us. An expert explained how the housing complex was designed to help promote exchanges among residents so that elderly people would not feel isolated. Everyone secretly suspected you would never watch this entire web video, but by God, you showed them.